This is a video tutorial on termite inspection reports. So you should all know that when you're doing a transaction that you're probably going to be needing a termite inspection report. Whether you represent the seller or the buyer, uh, this, this video tutorial will come in handy. Um, if you go back to your purchase contract and you look at the L section in the purchase contract, it talks about the termite inspection and a couple different places. It'll talk about uh, the time frame that the buyer has to choose the inspector and when that termite inspection report is supposed to be delivered to a buyer and also talks about the obligation of buyer to purchase the contract based on that termite inspection report. So if termites are found, whether it's live termites, uh, dry wood termites or ground termites, the inspector is probably going to recommend some sort of a treatment. It is the obligation of the seller to take care of any recommended treatment for that condition. If they do not take care of the condition or they refuse to do so, buyer would then be able to cancel because it is their obligation to do so. They are supposed to deliver a clear a home that's clear of termites and that would include tenting or ground termite treatment if that's what's recommended by the inspector. Uh, if Once that's done then the buyer must continue with the purchase contract. Another part of the termite inspection report is damage. Sometimes these, these inspectors they should all do at the they should all do this is report any kind of damage that they find during their inspection. So let's say there's live active termites, or there might even be no live active termites. Like maybe they had maybe had a tented before, but then there was still some damage from the time that there were termites. An inspector would find that too. And if that's the case, that would open up the uh, seller disclosure portion of the contract. Would then give the buyer a certain period of time to review and approve um, the termite damage that's shown in the report. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of examples of termite inspection reports. Uh, one that is clean, that doesn't have any issues to it, and another one that has uh, recommendations by the termite inspection company. So here I have a um, sample of a termite inspection report. Most of the termite inspectors on the island use the same format with their termite inspection reports. There are a couple of inspectors on the island that are that specialize in uh, termites and they're like entomologists and they do have a different type of reporting and their reports are a little bit different but almost all of them in some somewhere within the termite report will show you this uh, particular format here. Okay, so looking at this, you're going to see uh, the information that where it was dated. They'll probably reference an escrow number, who the escrow officer is, uh, the name of the company that's doing the inspection, uh, the name of the inspector. You know, like it's sort of like a contract of you know their their report. Give all the information about the actual transaction. So you've got the name of the company that's representing buyer and seller, and the actual property address. Okay, now there is a, a section here that says, was seller disclosure statement received? A lot of times a inspector wants to see the seller disclosure in case maybe there was at some point in the disclosure where the seller disclosed that there had been tenting done before, or maybe they had a tent, uh, some sort of tenting warranty. This all holds a little bit of weight with the inspector. Maybe they'll, uh, as they're doing their inspection, uh, see that maybe there's old termite droppings that if they saw in the seller disclosure that it was just treated, that might explain some things for the for the uh, for the um, termite inspector. This is just a general scope of the inspection that's on almost all of these reports. But the one thing that you're looking for is the uh, uh, report findings. So you have here the description of the property, and then you'll also notice here too where an inspector may say where they were not able to get in. So this could be something of concern for a buyer that if there were a lot of places where the, the inspector couldn't get in, that there should be no reason why he couldn't get in, that there could be potential termite infestation in those areas. So if you notice that there's a lot of areas that the inspector was not able to get into, you might want to uh, have a discussion with the seller agent about letting the inspector come back and inspect those areas. A lot of times there's like a, uh, like a crawl space that's really difficult to get into, or maybe there's a lot of stuff that belongs to the owner in a, in a very small knit area. 
it still is really good to get that place inspected but if it's just a small place a lot of times these inspectors will just do their inspection and just notate within here where they were not able to get into and it's really just up to a buyer whether or not they feel comfortable with the inspection if it's all clean and there's no termites found then um, and the buyer doesn't have a problem with that then you can just simply move forward but again if there is a lot of area within the house that you were not able to get into or the inspector was not able to get into then you might want to consider talking with the seller to have him go back out again okay here is the area that you want to look at for whether or not there's live termites okay and I don't understand why exactly on this particular uh, termite inspection report except to the fact that there were no live termites found but um, usually you'll see something like that described in here it'll say was there live termite infestation and the, the inspector would check off yes or no but in this case uh, he's got a section here where it talks about the damage um, and was there visible damage due to termites observed and he says no so then you would you, you could feel good about knowing that there's no termite damage um, but if there was damage then he would tell you which type of, of termite did the damage dry wood or subterranean and then he might have a, a little uh, d he'll have described where he notates those damaged areas um, like I said this is a clean termite report so we go down here where it says is further treatment for control of dry wood and or subterranean termites recommended and he says no if if there were live termites, I, I can um, tell you that they will say something to do with live termite infestation found. But he didn't find anything, so he checked no, and he didn't have any recommendations, so we don't need to worry about uh, the seller having to tent or do any kind of spot treatment. But then he does give I, um, recommendations or ex explanations of what could be uh, defined as uh, conducive to termites as something for a buyer to consider. But again, this is a clean clean uh, termite report so something that would not be of concern and then this would just be simply sent to the escrow company and also sent over to a buyer and that would then conclude the whole termite inspection portion of the contract so now what I want to do is show you what it does look like when there are live termites and termite damage here's a new termite inspection report done by a different company and uh, again see how it looks very similar to the other one I showed you with all the information about the property escrow all the people involved uh, buyer seller information and then you have was the seller disclosure statement received yes and then we scroll down and we see the same information uh, general description of the property were there any areas of the building obstructed in close or otherwise and in this case there was yes and then you would see where it was um, you can see where it was definitely uh, he wasn't able to get into those areas and then we have um, like I said in this case there were evidence of visible termite infestation so this the inspector checked off the yes for visible termite infestation observed and what type of termites he's observed so in this case it was dry wood um, if it was subterranean he would have checked there and now he has a diagram attached so let's see what he says for um, recommendation is further action of control of dry wood and or subterranean termites recommended um, I, I'm assuming that he checked yes for dry wood and no for subterranean um, and his recommendation is tent fumigation so in this case with this particular property the seller had to tent the home prior to closing so this is what you're looking for what is the inspector recommending because this is what your seller is going to have to do and as a buyer you as a buyer agent you know that now the seller has to tent this will be something that will need to be provided to a lender uh, you'll have to provide what they call a certificate of completion to the lender so you'll You'll need to work with the termite inspection company to get um, that document okay so I just wanted to show you what it did look like in case there was termites uh, visible now I want to show you another termite inspection report that notates damage okay so now we have a termite inspection report again by a third different inspector and this guy who did this inspection was definitely one of those that I'm talking about that is a specializes in bugs and and he's an entomologist and that sort of thing so they do tend to charge a lot more when you hire these uh, professionals and unfortunately I wasn't the one that 
this is actually for my transaction I wasn't the one that hired him I was representing the seller so you know I want to also point out to you that when you are um, representing a seller and you have a buyer who uh, uh, turns in a, a purchase contract where they say that the cost of the termite inspection uh, actual cost I let that go when I got the purchase contract so this particular inspection cost me twelve hundred dollars so typically a termite inspection should only cost between 350 and maybe 500 at the most but because this agent hired an expert entomologist yada yada it cost way more than the typical inspection and because I didn't check I didn't uh, counter on the actual cost part I uh, cost my client you know uh, almost double what it would have been had he not had he not countered so just putting that out there in case this happens to you so you'll notice that this is a very sophisticated termite inspection report but as you can see again they're using the same format here uh, like the other two that I showed you and uh, this one if you uh, we scroll down here you'll see he's notated that he has found um, areas where he was not able to access he has noticed live uh, termite infestation, dry wood and subterranean, and his recommendation for treatment instead of uh, tenting, he's he's saying that ground termite treatment is, is noted here. But what I want to point out on this one in particular is that he also has a diagram of termite damage. So what this did to me as a seller agent was now I have a situation with new updated, uh, new and latent discovered information with regard to the seller disclosure. So he's got a separate report here that shows all of the damage that he's found with regard to the inspection. So we've got the whole house here, diagram of the house, uh, floor plan, and then he shows down here uh, termite damages, termite droppings, ground termite damage, and then items that would be conducive to uh, potential termite infestation. So all you would do is kind of notate the number here and look at your um, your diagram here and, and find wherever he's pointing out. That's what you can notate where he's finding a damage. He also provides more information uh, with regard to another part of the house. So again, you might get a, a termite inspection report that looks something like this, in which case it's very comprehensive, uh, but again, I think I've showed you how uh, you when, when you're looking for termite damage this termite inspection report report is an update to the disclosure I believe that we have that in our elite property addendum that any kind of uh, termite report surveys are all automatic updates to the disclosure but what this did was this opened up that period of time for the buyer to review and approve uh, the purchase of the house pretty much so all this damage took the uh, made them think you know do I want to ask for a credit do I want to continue with the purchase I see that there's all this damage I know you're going to remedy the the ground treatment you're gonna do that for me but what am I gonna do about all this damage I need to ask you to reduce your price so that's pretty much what they did to me here was they reduced the price they asked for a price reduction which we did agree to uh, we did have to compromise on that but uh, when you have things like this it's just something that you you're really not going to be able to control because the buyer dictates who they use for the termite inspector so I think um, that would conclude this uh, termite inspection report tutorial and again if you have any questions regarding termite inspections and things like that you can ask me or uh, we can always contact a termite inspection uh, termite inspector to maybe help with with uh, answering any questions that concludes this tutorial on termite inspection reports